Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Victor Derrickson. I work for a company named Synoptic. We are a Microsoft consulting and integration services company. Uh, we are here today to go over the ERP shootout to discuss the different Microsoft ERP software packages, give you a little bit of background on each. Uh, it's now uh, one minute after the hour, and we're going to wait for a couple more people to join, uh, and then we'll be starting the presentation. So thank you very much for coming, and we'll be beginning soon. Uh, for those of you who are on the call, uh, we'll be starting here shortly. We will be recording the call, so you can watch this again later if you'd like uh, at your convenience or to focus on a particular point of interest uh, for you or your company. And uh, okay, it's about two minutes after the hour. I think anyone who's going to be coming is probably here by now, so I'm going to start with the slide deck. Okay. So again, thank you everyone for coming. Uh, the company here is Synoptic, and we're gonna be doing an ERP shootout. We're gonna be comparing the various Microsoft ERP solutions, uh, which are uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central, Dynamics 365 Finance and Operations, and Dynamics 365 Supply Chain. Um, if you're curious about Microsoft ERP products, but you're not sure which one is the best one for your business, then you're in the right spot. This webinar was specifically designed to help give you some background and answer your questions, at least give you a starting point on where to look. So what are we going to cover today? Well, for one thing, a lot of people don't even, uh, maybe are not completely familiar with what an ERP is and why it's important, so we're going to cover that. Uh, give you some background information on what happens when you choose the right ERP solution, overview of Microsoft's ERP, and then how to pick the right ones. Uh, we have a member here from both our BC and FNO team to help to discuss the benefits and weaknesses of each solution to help you understand which one is the best fit for your company. And uh, hope, our hope again is by the end of this webinar, you'll have a better idea of who Synoptic is and which ERP. Microsoft ERP project product is a better fit for your company. Uh, now we have a, a poll for you guys to answer and you're gonna see that pop up on your screen here in just a second. The poll is gonna be, uh, do you, you use an ERP system at your company now? It's gonna be yes or no. Go ahead and answer that while we're introducing ourselves. So again, my name is Victor Derrickson. I'm the practice manager for Dynamics 365 Business Central at Synoptic. Um, I will also be your moderator for today. Uh, Nicolette, would you like to introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. My name is Nicolette Richards, and I am an engagement manager here at Synoptic. I'm going to cover the finance and operations side or the supply chain side uh, for D365. So. I'm looking forward to um, to getting into the discussion today. Awesome. Thanks a lot, Nicolette. Thank you. Oops. Oh, my gosh. Getting a little trigger happy here this morning. Apologize for that. Okay. So uh, what is an ERP and why is it important? Now, I actually do have a lot of people ask me, what does ERP stand for? And that stands for Enterprise Resource Planning. Now, to understand the benefits to your company helps to understand a little bit of the history of where they came from. So the first ERPs were imagined and implemented and designed starting around 1990. And prior to that, you saw two different types of systems. Uh, big companies had mainframes and they typically had a mainframe with a custom built solution for each department of the company. Small to medium sized companies uh, generally did everything on paper. And so the idea behind an ERP was you would have one solution that would run the entire company. That means that item numbers were the same in the purchasing and inventory system that they were in the, say, the sales system and the warehouse system and everything as you processed it automatically posted to the accounting system in the background. It was sort of a revolutionary idea back then. Let me give you a couple examples of why the, those first ERPs were so valuable to company. For example, my first ERP implementation, which was in about 1996, was with a small company in Tacoma, Washington that makes welding torches. 
And prior to that ERP implementation, they did everything on paper. And they had approximately 12 order entry and accounting people who would just track, you know, create paper, photocopy paper, get the paper to the different departments, and then keep track of that paper and make sure everything ended up in accounting at the end of the month. Five years later, we did an upgrade and from one ERP to another. And at that point, they only had five people in their accounting group, despite the fact that the company had tripled in revenue and volume of transactions. Now, here's a second example. My first job out of college was at AT&T in their IT group. And believe it or not, at that point, this is like 1993, they had never been able to figure out how to get their purchasing mainframe system to integrate with their accounting mainframe system. And as a result, they had an office in Florida with 50 people, five zero people, who did nothing but get reams of green bar, uh, like green, old green bar paper, and just manually type in accounting entries from their purchasing system into their accounting system. So people ask me today, because these systems have been around for so long, they're sort of standard, they say, wow, are ERP systems really saving me money? Are they providing benefit? And I say, absolutely, because I saw what the world looked like before we had ERP systems. Now, uh, let me see. Uh, we have another poll question for you. Uh, is your ERP system helping you achieve the following goals? Um, and those goals are reducing waste, continuous improvement, improved customer service, streamlining orders. You should see those uh, pop up on your screen. Now, let's go back and look at the results of the prior poll. Uh, in the prior poll, 66% of people said they are currently using an ERP system, and 33% said no. Interesting. Okay, so that's that's interesting. So we'll go ahead and move forward while you're answering the current poll question. So here's a success story. Uh, this is my personal experience on uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central. It was with a printing company in Seattle, Washington. They were about $35 million in revenue small family owned company. They'd been in business for 30 years and had never been able to get a fully detailed cost of their inventory items. So they didn't really know what their cogs were. They had a guess, but they didn't really know. And part of the reason was they had several outside subcontracting steps as part of their process. Uh, we designed a solution that allowed them to track the uh, outside subcontract steps in their printing process. And one of the things that they discovered was that as the company had grown, they had not reset their standard print size. And in the printing industry, half of the cost of printing is just in the setup of the print run. And so a bigger print run means less cost per product. And so approximately a year after they went live on Business Central, they discovered that their cogs were a lot higher than they thought. They adjusted or doubled their standard print run size and as a result, they realized a 30% reduction in COGS, which was the savings that they were saving uh, that they were realizing every single year. And that 30% savings in COGS was enough to cover the cost of the implementation and their licensing every single year. So they were saving huge amounts of money. This was a truly transformative uh, uh, a solution for their particular company in their industry. Uh, now for the next slide. Nicolette is going to give us information about a successful FNO implementation. Go ahead, Nicolette. Okay, great. Um, so yes, yeah, so F the finance and operations is a, um, a a larger platform, right? And what I uh, one of my recent experiences, um, there were a couple where we did a roll off from SAP, right? Where the the client did a roll off. Um, they were either through a divestment or the company just needed to make a change. And um, one particular firm was an $11 billion um, private um, debt credit um, uh, credit management company. And what they did was they were primarily using it for financials, but integrating with other external platforms um, that um, provided, for example, front end loan assistance. So it was um, quite easy and quite um, um, a strategic move for them to make the move and select Dynamics 365 for finance and operation. There was banking integration, so they would make their, their payments to their vendors directly um, from D365 and integrate directly with their bank, as well as manage their billing and procurement services, as well as other um, financial concerns for the business. 
right? So with Dynamics 365, um, it also was just a, a, a more friendly user experience coming off of my experience. In the past, I used to implement SAP, uh, which is a strong but really rigid, um, really not generally user-friendly system. So the users just acclimated to the system really quickly. All right, Victor, do you want to continue? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, let's see, uh, I think we've got some poll answers in. So, oh, it looks like a very consistent response here. So people say, is uh, the question again was, is your ERP system helping you achieve the following goals? And it looks like we had about 66% said yes, and 33% said no. So it sounds like a lot of people attending this meeting or this webinar uh, already feel like their current ERP system is more or less uh, meeting the goals for their business. So that's interesting. Okay, going forward now, just to drill down in that a little bit, uh, if you're not sure, or any of you did maybe didn't answer the question, like how do you know is your your ERP system meeting the needs of your company? Um, there's a couple different ways to answer that. Um, for one thing, uh, if the if your current system is not providing useful information, or if that information is difficult to get at or not readily available as a report, if you're doing a lot of manual reports in Excel, that's probably a good indication that your current ERP system is not meeting your needs. Um, if you're dealing with disparate systems, and a disparate system here could actually include Microsoft Excel. Um, I often joke that Microsoft Excel is the most commonly used ERP system in the world because people say, well, we have a really good ERP system, but we have to track something, you know, in, some inventory information or some customer information or something that we have to track in an Excel system. That actually would be a good indicator that your current ERP system is not meeting all of your needs. Or are you having difficulty meeting customer expectations? Um, if you have a good ERP system in place, you should be able to see sales orders that have been entered in the system and be able to easily translate that into, for example, inventory purchase requirements so that the purchasing team has the right product when you want to make it or when you want to sell it so that you can get the product shipped to your customers on time or on the delivery schedule that they're asking for. Um, if you answered, no, my current ERP system is not meeting any of those needs, then you may actually need to reconsider a new ERP system because the systems today I should be able to handle everything that I discussed and more so that you don't have any uh, manual systems or external systems involved at all. Now, uh, let's talk. Let's start talking about the different systems from Microsoft. So up until about 2018, uh, Microsoft actually had four different ERP systems. It was Dynamics GP, Dynamics Nav, Dynamics SL, and Dynamics AX. Um, Dynamics Nav ended up getting rebranded as Dynamics 365 Business Central and was moved into a SaaS platform. Dynamics AX was rebranded as both Finance and Operations and Dynamics 365 Supply Chain and was also moved to a SaaS environment. And Dynamics GP and Dynamics SL were actually flagged as end of life. Um, they are currently being supported uh, but it does; uh, those two products actually do have an end-of-life roadmap where at some point in the future, two or three years out, they will not be supported with bug fixes, hot fixes, or you won't be able to buy licensing anymore either. Um, so if you're on those platforms, you are going to need to look at moving or upgrading at some point in the future. Now, moving on, let's get a little deeper into the two uh, ERP systems that we focus on here at Synoptic, that being Business Central and Finance and Operations. So we have a little compare and contrast here. So one of the things you'll notice is Business Central, um, since it is designed to be a small, medium-sized company solution, uh, generally has a lot of the same functionality as uh, Finance and Operations, but not as well-developed or not as thoroughly developed, which is intentional. They're trying to keep the cost and the, the complexity of the solution down. So, for example, um, if you have inventory items, well, we can support that with Business Central, but generally Business Central works best for a company that has between one to five different inventory locations. Um, if you do manufacturing, we can support one uh, a bomb, which is a bill of materials per item. 
Um, if you have multi-company and multi-country operations, well, we can do consolidations in inner company, but the companies are not able to see, uh, don't have visibility into each other's product, and the intercompany process uh, requires you to issue a PO and an SO from from the different companies. Um, so it has some really great base functionality, but for larger enterprises, a lot of times it doesn't necessarily have what you need, which would cause you to look at something like a finance and operations. Nicolette, would you like to fill in our audience on some of the functionality of FNL? Right. Great. Thanks, Victor. So with finance and operations, um, we it's offered in um, two separate kind of licenses. Um, so if you're strictly a financial firm, a financial leaning firm, where your users will doing financial operations, you can just get licensing for just the financials, the general ledger, the trial balance, the um, accounts payables, accounts receivable, you'll have that. Um, also within D D365, you'll also have more, um, or FNO I should say, you'll have the um, more advanced inventory management um, capabilities. You have the site warehouse location breakdown, and we'll talk a little bit more about um, things such as the warehouse management um, features where you have advanced warehouse management as well as some transportation management as well. Um, you can, we talked a little bit about the multi-company. You We have the multi-company support where you also can have intercompany commerce where you can buy and sell between the two legal entities or multiple legal entities um, as well as you know, there's just really a rich, um, diverse set of, of capabilities and functionalities that this, that this platform offers. And um, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in the, the next few slides. Uh, Victor, continue? Yeah, thank you. Uh, yeah, I like to affectionately refer to finance and operations as Business Central's big brother. Because uh, a lot of the functionality is the same, but in F and O, there's always a more. You know, which is great if you're a large company, but for smaller businesses, a lot of times you don't need that additional level of complexity. So let's talk a little bit about the size of businesses that would fit for each particular product. So for Business Central, like I mentioned before, it's really targeted to the small to mid-sized companies. Uh, what does that mean? Generally, the company profile, you'd be looking at 25 to 500 employees. Uh, minimum number of users on the system is generally around five to 10. Um, it's great in distribution, manufacturing, or professional services. Now, for implementation, the, it, there's a huge range here, and it kind of depends on how much functionality your company needs. If you're accounting only with maybe just a little bit of AR and AP, uh, we can see successful implementations as low as $15,000, um, and that can take 30 to 60 days. Now, if you have three or four production facilities spread out across the U.S. Uh, with manufacturing and inventory, and maybe you're more in like the 100 to 150 million dollar range of revenues, then we can see projects range up to six to seven hundred thousand dollars, and can take as much as nine months. Um, so there's, there's quite a range, and we can we can help you find the fit of functionality to meet your business. Make sure that we we only implement what you would need. Uh, Nicolette, would you like to talk a little bit about finance and operations, cl mm -hmm. client profiles and implementations? Sure. Now, the typical client tend to be um, from a, a bit larger, right, especially than what we saw we see for Business Central. Um, a, a larger employee base, um, they typically have, you know, uh, multiple sites um, where they'll have locations, you know, on the north, you know, Northeast, Southeast, you know, spread across the U.S. or global. Um, they also have um, typically have a larger um, implementation costs um, just because of the the amount of features that um, they're implementing. Especially when we talk about the the project life cycle and the the various departments that are going to be involved. Um, the implementation time frame, um, as shown here, it can range. I think the, the smallest project that I've done, the shortest one, um, which is not typical but possible, is an implementation less than six months. But typically, it would take about a year, um, even a year and a half, depending on how robust the, the project requirements are. Um, a few, I'll say a few years ago, uh, a colleague or former colleague of mine had joined a company and they were a small company 
and they were maybe about 10 employees, right? Um, they had really a nice revenue size, but when he asked me what software um, they should use, he really was trying to go to D365. But we ended up routing him to use Business Central um, because of the size of the organization, because of the number of users, um, and because of the, 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 the complexity of their businesses. It was not as complex. So D365 is um, a more ro a more robust, built out, still user friendly um, uh, ERP platform. But if your business is um, still young, or it's your your requirements, your integration requirements are really um, not so complex, then you want to stay on the business central side. Otherwise, D365 financing operation is something you would want to do. Investigate. And the other thing is with um, Microsoft Dynamics uh, um, FNO, we also offer the subscription model. Right, so if they you're you're paying for each user um, on a monthly uh, basis, and um, you may have also device licenses. So if you have a shop floor, for example, where there's a shared device, where let's say to, to record labor hours. If you're doing manufacturing, um, you can have those um, device licenses. So you're not necessarily paying for each shop floor worker, um, but for each device that's being used. Right. So there's there's a lot more if we, we, we compare to that. And um, let's continue with it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and thanks for pointing out that you, there is a lot of gray area a lot of times. This is not cookie cutter and there is no one size fits all. Um, and a lot of times uh, myself and the FNO team will work together to try to determine what's the best fit for a company. There are a lot of larger companies that you would think would fit, would be a better fit on finance and operations, um, but for some reason, maybe organizational complexity or just uh, their team size or whether they've been able to fully develop their internal IT or project teams, they, they may need to go to Business Central initially while they're continuing to build their business and get the headcount they need to support a solution like an FNO. So yeah, that's a great point, Nicolette. Um, on this next slide, we've broken it down uh, in a little more granularity. So if you're really interested in like specific functions and is it supported by Business Central or is it uh, supported by FNO? So for example, here, you know, if you need warehouse management and you want to have different zones and bins and uh, pick strategies, we can support that with Business Central, but it's definitely not an enterprise level solution. So, uh, you know, if you need something really complex or if you have a 200,000 square foot warehouse with hundreds of or thousands and thousands of products, like you may need to go with an F and O. Uh, fleet management is something that is not supported in Business Central at all. And so if we have a client that wants to do fleet management or a transportation management system to coordinate deliveries and costs and get uh, you know, supplier pricing, delivery pricing, we would look at an add-on solution or a third party, integrate with a third party system. And so you can get a little bit of a breakdown here. The, like I said, we, you know, Microsoft tries to keep business central a uh, smaller scale to keep the cost and the complexity down for the small to mid-sized companies. And then where there's a gap, we'll tweak Business Central with either a third-party solution and integration to an external system or a modification to fit your specific needs so that we can still get the solution that you need without the size and complexity of something like an FNO. But if you're a bigger company, you really should go to that bigger solution like FNO. Um, Nicolette, why don't you tell people about some of the details here? Oh, excellent. Yes. So this is about really, this is the shootout, right? This is where the rubber meets the road when we look at the two solutions. And then it helps to kind of know what you want from your business, right? What are you, what are you trying, what are your short term goals, and your long term goals? Um, and what is your growth strategy? Um, and if, and, and if considering those points and looking at um, these two platforms, if you know at some point you're going to be, um, expanding your warehouses, you're going to increase. Um, you know, if your if your if your your current trend shows a gradual project pro, um, a projection for increased sales over a period of time, where you'll need to have um, some more um, maybe integrations with, let's say, um, your customers um, or vendor collaboration to kind of help expedite um, the 
the, the purchasing process. Um, D365 will provide a lot of the features that will need to help you support that growth. Um, so Victor had talked about the advanced warehouse management um, or the picking strategies, D365 supports that. If you find that your sales are increasing to the point where you need to have a more um, system directed, um, rule based approach to um, picking your inventory and allocating inventory from your, your various warehouses, whether it's one work warehouse or you've got multiple, um, D365 is going to really be a, a really rich solution to provide that um, those capabilities, including with mo mobile device support, um, printing support, label printing support. Um, it will support things such as um, transportation management. If you're dealing with issues of freight reconciliation where you um, are purchasing, um, you know, you're, you're using uh, freight carrier services and you're getting these bills and you don't know where these bills are coming from, what sales order was this attributed to, what PO was this attributed to, D365 will help you kind of manage that and um, takes, it takes into, um, it, it really kind of takes everything from the transaction level all the way back to, to your financial. So there's a, a clear line and traceability for, for these, these various transactions. Um, so you mentioned fleet management, for, fleet management, for example, you have the ability to um, maintain um, the, the various machineries that are within your properties, um, schedule downtime, for example, um let's see there's there's just so much i, I and I'm, i get so excited about this because i i really um i've worked with so many different erp systems in the past i've used to implement sap which is just so robust um i've, I've worked with epicor vantage fujitsu glovia um and and d365 just just has it all from the user experience standpoint as well as from the um, just the functionality and capable capability standpoint, it really easily integrates with with um, Microsoft Office, um, especially Microsoft Office 365, and so it it gives you a lot, and um, and and it doesn't take long to get there, right? If you have a vision to get there and you know what you want, um, this scorecard is really going to be helpful. But we can even further. Um, give you pointers on on what kind of um, features the software offers. Um, I think we had a question, and I I, I didn't want to um, go away from that. There was a question about QuickBooks. Um, someone says they wanted to move away from QuickBooks, and whether or not Business Central is the best bet. Oh yeah, so that's a great question. Um, you, you know, like I said before, there's no one size fits all. And, uh, but generally speaking, um, and I would say maybe 80 to 90% of the cases is uh, if you're on QuickBooks now, uh, you're probably gonna wanna move to Business Central. Um, you're, you're probably like in that business size where Business Central would be a better fit. But I have seen exceptions and I have seen some really large companies or some companies get really large on QuickBooks and then just jump right to uh, finance, FNO, finance and operations. Um, so again, we'd really want to talk to you, but generally speaking, if you're coming off of something like a QuickBooks, Business Central would be your next step up. So um, so let's move on to the next slide. Uh, Nicola, do you want to get into a little bit of the benefits of finance and operations versus supply chain? Uh, those are two different branded products. However, they're both on the same core uh, software base. Why don't you explain a little bit of the difference between those two? Okay. so. When we talk about when we talk about Microsoft Dynamics 365 for finance, I mentioned this earlier. But um, if you're if you're strictly looking for financials, right? This is going to cover. This is going to help you get a clearer picture of your organization, the financial health of your your company, um, and this is offered through a number of different features. Of course, you have the shared chart of accounts. So if you have multiple legal entities that you want to manage under one umbrella platform, one umbrella system, D365 allows you to do that with a shared ledger account. You can see how each company is performing and, and that will all roll up into, um, let's say, a, a consolidation um, company if you want to do your month and reporting and, and kind of look at your total performance as well. Um, we also 
offer and the platform, you know, accounts payables, accounts receivables, fixed asset management. And um, again, these are all tools, like all your transactions, basically um, your sub ledger um, transactions roll up into your GL. So you can, you can get real time visibility into your financial performance. In addition to that, um, if you want to have a more a feature, like a rich experience in your reporting, you can integrate with Power BI, um, which is a standard uh, capability of the system. So you can see things graphically um, from a financial standpoint. As well as we have um, a suite called um, Management Reporter, which gives you the ability to kind of um, look, analyze your business at the um, from a granular level, you know, down to like basic dimensions, right? Based on department performance or based on your sites or based on any other thing, um, such as let's say you can track things based on customer, look at your financials based on customers, based on um, any financial dimension that you define that's important to you, All right? So you can have a global um, view of your financials in a real time basis. Um, with D365 without necessarily having to commit to the supply chain side of it if that's not what your business is about. So let's continue on to the next slide. Now with the supply chain, um, the supply chain is, you know, when we talk about supply chain, you're, you're doing your purchasing, your sales, your um, manufacturing, um, all of those pieces, all of those um, critical pieces um, of in terms of managing your supply chain, including master planning, um, where you can look at your organization wide within your company, within one company itself, or within all companies that might fall under your um, with your organization, and you can plan um, and <coughs> excuse me, you can plan as well as to um, basically optimize um, your inventory and logistics in this umbrella, right? So we talked early about supply chain, um, warehouse management, we talked about transportation management, inventory. This covers all of the capabilities, the, regardless of your business vertical. If your business vertical is, if you're a company that needs to, um, let's say, send text out on, send text out to do jobs, or if you're a company that has, um, you know, text within a warehouse or, you know, I'll say engineers within a warehouse that are designing products, or you have people within the warehouse that are manufacturing. Um, Sounds like Nick Luck is uh, dealing with some of the issues of, of working from home, including some background noise there. So uh, we'll we'll give her a minute to get past that. Um, thank, you. thank you. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, so I'm saying so. So the supply chain umbrella, it, it really and and it gives you the the ability to manage those processes. You're you're buying, you're selling, you're manufacturing, you're planning, um, as well as. Um, all the, the bits and pieces underneath that, such as, you know, things such as um, printing specialized labels for your customers. It, it covers a really broad range. And, and what I like about the product itself is that, you know, I've worked with companies that make candy. I've worked with companies that um, make medical equipment and companies that make, you know, food and no matter what, the software offers the base capabilities as well, and not just not basic, but the, the foundational capabilities that are required to run any kind of business. Um, that's the richness that it brings to the table and, and what makes me really um, proud and happy to work with this platform. That's great. Um, OK, so it looks like it's time for another poll question. Um, has your organization ever undergone an ERP evaluation assessment? Uh, there's going to be four answers, yes, no. Um, please answer those questions. And while you're looking that over, we're going to go ahead and continue forward with our presentation. Uh, so while you're answering that question, probably a good thing to mention, what is an evaluation assessment? So so here's the trick. You know, 
anytime you've you know maybe heard of a, a bad experience with an IT implementation project of any kind of system, ERP or otherwise, you know, there's there are some failures out there. And and usually in my experience, what one thing I've seen is most of those failed projects have one thing in common, and that is that the company that bought the system uh, didn't always know what exactly their underlying needs were. Uh, they they had a sense that they they had a problem. They were trying to fix it. They looked at some systems. They picked something and just kind of crossed their fingers to hope that it was going to be the right solution for their needs. This ERP evaluation assessment gives you a really low cost way to determine what your business needs are. Um, it's low cost, low commitment. Uh, generally, two days of our team working with your group, and then two days of follow up to to produce a roadmap and a clear recommendation. Uh, these assessments are non-binding. And we do occasionally have customers that go through this assessment and we go to the outcome and we say, you know what, your current system is actually meeting your needs for the most part where there's gaps or limitations. Those limitations are not significant to provide enough benefit to, to justify the cost of an upgrade. But that's information that we would collect and give to you. Now, if you decide you do go forward, these assessments also are that first step to help us build an estimate and start the project. So, uh, you know, you're essentially getting a head start on your project, and uh, you know we'll, this will save you because we discount these assessments. This will save you a little bit of time and money in the long run to get to give you that head start. Now, um, how does it exactly work? So it's a you know a six step process more or less. Uh, we come in and conduct interviews with your SMEs, which are subject matter experts. Those are the people that really know a particular process inside and out, right? So you might have somebody in customer service who really knows the sales order process. You might have a salesperson who really understands the sales process. You might have an inventory guy. Like we, we would talk to each of those people who you really identify as some, being somebody that knows their process and is really good at interpreting the difference between what is a requirement of your business and where maybe you have a workaround to accommodate a lack, a limitation of your existing system. We would do all this analysis. We ask a lot of leading questions. We're really good at that because we do this all the time. And then based on that, we would put together a documentation for a roadmap and make a recommendation on which solution is the better solution for yours long-term and why. And then we would present that to you and your team. And then, you know, if you decide that's a justification for an upgrade, then we would start talking about that. Um, da, 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 da. So moving forward to the next slide. Uh, so the Synoptics ERP, oh, and I'm sorry, there was a little bit of a delay in the click there. So there we go. Uh, Synoptics ERP envisioning assessment. Nicola, do you want to give us some background on this one? Uh, Nicola, did we lose you? Are you there? Hello? Oh, I think Nicola might. Oh, Hi. there you go. Go ahead. So as um, you were saying, we offer the, the ERP assessments. We have two different um, types that we can offer. We have a quick start um, where we have one resource, one person who will work directly with your company to um, assess what your, com your current infrastructure is. And especially if you have people who are already um, have an idea of what your, your challenges are, what your goals are. Um, we'll, we'll come come in, do an assessment, um, put together a presentation, as well as um, give you a demonstration of what your new system envisioning, based on our understanding and our analysis, give you a demonstration of what um, the platform, whether Business Central or um, FNO, would offer to you. Offer to you. And... Um, We'd also give you a, a clear roadmap and directions on how you can get from where you currently are in your system to that future state, right? And now um, the other one is a more detailed one where we do the VPR. Um, so it's, we'll look at your business processes. Um, we'll do requirements um, gathering and assessment, basically do a, a fit gap analysis, looking at your most business critical um, capabilities that you're using, whether whether you are on an ERP system already, and um, whether you're on you're, you're you're starting from scratch with nothing, maybe moving from um, you know an Excel, maybe moving from an, an homegrown legacy system, right? So what the secondary strategy offers is 
it, it includes um, a more detailed planning strategy, um, giving you a more detailed assessment, and we'll put together a uh, proposal outlining how we plan to get you from where you currently are to your future state. Um, so it includes strategic planning, um, and this can be hap this can happen over a number of um, of weeks to make sure we're getting the a clear picture of your organization and putting together and tailoring a solution that's right for you. Awesome, thank you, Nicolette. Um, so I just got noticed that we're getting a lot of questions. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump forward to the next tab, uh, next page on the presentation, which is the Synoptic Overview. And I'm gonna skip through this, or not skip through it, but I'm gonna scan through this rather quickly. Uh, Synoptic is a, a large consultancy. We're at over 900 employees globally. Um, and we offer a full suite of solutions. Uh, now, in the past, when I've been implementing Business Central, and I think Nicolette probably has the same or similar experience, there's a lot of partners out there that only do one product. They only do Business Central, or they only do FNO. And if you need something else from the Microsoft ecosphere, or maybe you need some infrastructure assistance, or uh, who knows, anything related to IT, computer, and software, we probably can provide a team that specializes in that service and we can help you through it so that you only have one company that you have to work with. You don't have to deal with four or five vendors on every single project where each one is pointing the finger at each other. That doesn't happen with us because it's all just us. So let's go ahead and move into the Q&A because uh, again, I, I'm getting word that we have a lot of questions coming up here and let me see. Um, Okay, so here's a question. Um, so is supply chain management part of D365 FNO? Nicolette, do you wanna cover that one? Uh, yes, sure. Supply chain management is a part of D365 FNO. Um, I mentioned earlier the financials hand handles the general ledger, you know, your trial balance, accounts payables, accounts receivables, where the operational side looks at your your operations right your sales your purchasing um your inventory your manufacturing supply you know and master planning so nicolette um is it fair to say that a supply chain is almost like a bundle that includes finance and operations By, i i i consider finance and operations the the bundle itself right because oh, okay. financials really is your backbone if you're doing supply chain you can't you, unless you are integrating with some other system for your financials you're going to have to have financial somewhere right so mm -hmm. financials and operations is like the complete picture completes the full circle gotcha yeah, on Business Central, it's a little different. We only have one branded product, and it's just Business Central. Uh, we do have different licensing types. So we have an essentials license, which is accounting and distribution. Distribution is purchase orders, sales orders, and inventory. But then there's a premium license if you need manufacturing, uh, which is a different license type that you assign to your users. We also have, like Nicola had mentioned, we also have a device license. So if you have a large number of employees out in the warehouse or the factory floor, you just buy a license for the physical device. So you don't have to set up each individual employee. And then we also have something called a Teams license, um, where it's a view only uh, access to the system for, um, you know, maybe uh, uh, it's, it's hard to know. I've seen it used a lot of different ways. But if you have somebody that pretty much needs read only access to the system to, to check up an information or track, uh, you know, order status or something, that can really save you a lot of money uh, with the team's license as well. Um, hey, Nicholas, I have a question for you. So on a business central side, we also have um, free accounting uh, licenses. So if you have an outside an accountant, you can essentially give that person limited access to log in directly to Business Central to see your finances if you have somebody doing your taxes or you know for whatever accounting or audit or whatever. Do you have something like that on the FNO side as well? Well, on the FNO side, we have a finance license and we have a supply chain license, right? Mm -hmm. Now, your finance license, if your user is only doing financials, then they would only get the finance license. Mm -hmm. And if the user is someone who's doing financials and um, supply chain activities, then they'll get both. Um, mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that's that's pretty much 
for the, that type of scenario that they would either have a finance or 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 a finance and supply chain license. Interesting. Uh, looks like we have another question. Uh, in supply chain, is it possible to track each SKU uh, by tagging them with a the barcode? That's actually uh, that's actually yes to both, but to both systems. So both BC and finance and operations allows you to attach a barcode to a product and track it in your warehouse and scan it, so you don't have to enter the item number in every single time. Let me see. Do we have? Uh, let's see what other questions we have out there. Looks like a lot of them uh, covered the same questions. Oh, do we have global evaluation assessment consultants? Uh, that's so. That's interesting. Um, by global evaluation assessment consultants. We may have to drill down on that in a little bit more detail, uh, global evaluation. So I guess if you have a, uh, if your company, for example, has operations in multiple com countries, um, I'm, I'm guessing is that's what the person's asking. Do we have the ability to evaluate all of the countries uh, together as part of that assessment? Uh, Nick, I think, uh, it, it, do you have enough there to answer that question? Well, can you hear me? Yes. So we have capability. We have, as you mentioned, 900 employees across the, the organization. Um, I think approximately 250 of those are directly on the um, ERP vertical. Um, we're, we've worked across multiple continents. We've worked in the North America We've worked on projects in South America, Europe, um, in Asia. So our consultants have a really broad knowledge of um, the, the laws and regulations as it applies to different um, jurisdictions. And yes, they can provide um, assistance and assessments of your organization, <clears throat> no mm. matter where you're located. I think probably the only way we, we haven't worked is in Antarctica. I don't think we've had one <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, as while you were saying that, I was thinking I, I actually was on a call with a Business Central client. You know, I I tend to generally tend to think of FNO supply chain as being like the multinational global company solution, but the reality is, even small businesses these days have operations around the world. And so, just a couple of weeks ago, I was on a call <clears throat> with a client, and we had people from their company where they had a supply chain manager in Israel. They had a logistics and production team managing co-packers in China. Uh, we had people from India, and uh, and then one of their uh, finance people was located in South America. And this is for a seventy-five million dollar company. So, you know, either product, yeah, we have experience working with global operations. You know, the world today is global, and and even small companies have operations around the world, and that's something that we have a lot of experience with. Uh, let me see. Do we have any more questions out there? Looks looks like a lot of the questions were covering the same the same topics. Um, oh, here's one. Uh, so the person asks, is uh, Dynamics, GP, SL, AX, and NAV being phased out? So that was actually something I, I mentioned on one of the earlier slides. So Dynamics NAV actually was rebranded as Dynamics 365 Business Central. Um, now currently, Business Central is offered on both on-premise and on the SaaS environment, the SaaS being software as a service where it's hosted by Microsoft. Um, we don't see very many people implementing Business Central on premise anymore. And I've done a lot of financial analysis with clients. And what we found is uh, over a five year period, the total cost of ownership for the SaaS environment is significantly less, sometimes as much as 20% less. Uh, partly because Microsoft is able to use their huge size and get economies of scale on the infrastructure, infrastructure and services, uh, servers and all that hardware in the background. Um, you also save on licensing because you only buy licenses 
as you need them. So there's a huge cash flow advantage of only buying a couple licenses, whereas on the on-prem environment, you have to buy all your licenses up front and set up the server and SQL server and get everything configured. Now, as far as uh, AX, AX, as I mentioned before, uh, was rebranded as Dynamics 365 FNO. And then GP and SL, Dynamics GP and Dynamics SL are getting phased out, um, are, are considered end of life and will not be supported after another two or three years. We're not exactly sure of the date. Microsoft has pushed it back a couple times and when they're going to end support for those products, but they will stop supporting those products at some point in the future. Oh, here's an interesting question. Uh, does FNO supply chain have forecasting and budgeting features? Nicolette, do you want to you take that one? And it's a yes to both of them. There is um, forecasting. Um, you have demand forecasting as well as um, you know master planning um, that looks at your full capability across across the organization. It will look at the you know items that need to be created. It needs. It looks at the lead times. It looks at the resources, um, your bill of material. Um, so, so short answer is yes, we do have forecasting. Um, budgeting features are also there. We have a really robust budgeting feature um, that um, shifts the standard with the software. Okay, awesome. Oh, here's another interesting question. Oh, Nicolette, you're getting all the questions today. Um, question is, can we manage intercompany supply chain with uh, Dynamics 365 supply chain and management can see data at all country levels or individual country levels and across all countries consolidated? All right, so if I hear correctly, can we manage, is it intercompany or intercountry? Oh, I'm sorry, intercountry, you're right. Supply chain with supply chain and management to see data at a country level. Oh, that's a that's a good one. Um, so if each country is let's say managed, I I, I think that question is a, a multi layered one because it, it depends on the structure or of your organization. So if let's say you each country is managed by a different legal entity, which I presume, then yes, you can have multi um, planning across multiple legal entities, right? Um, if your if your countries are, and I don't know how you do this legally, but if your countries were under one legal entity and they were, you know, somehow bifurcated based on these sites um, or business units, then yes, you can do your planning at that level as well. And um, I talked earlier about integration with Power BI. Yes, the system, you can do reporting based on that, those details, but based on the information you're getting out of the system. But Power BI gives you a really rich user experience where you have graphics, you can have, um, you know, geographical indicators, as well as, you know, bar charts, pie charts, et cetera, and they're interactive. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, so uh, we do have a follow-up question, uh, Nicolette. If, is, they're asking, is that is that forecasting that you described, can you configure it as month-on-month -month or a rolling forecast? Month-on-month <laughs> -month or rolling forecast? Um, I think we have the ability to do... I would have to... I, would, I really want to kind of... It's been a while since I've looked at the forecasting module in detail, but... If you can configure based on different keys. You can set you can set how what in what time buckets you're you're forecasting for. So you have flexibility there. Hmm. Okay, and then so we have another question here. So on the detailed business process review, discovery, and assessment, um, do you know off the top of your head? the cost for that particular uh, ERP assessment program? I don't know off the top of my head the cost for that. Mm. Um, okay. So can definitely, if someone is interested, we can we can get that. But I know that we do offer a savings. Um, there's a 33, there's a chance to, to get, if you register, if one of the first five people who register after this call, you can receive a 33% saving on the assessment itself. Mm. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I know on the on the Dynamics 365 Business Central side, uh, we we only have one assessment right now, which is a four day assessment. So it's two days with the client's team, and then two days of follow up and producing the the documents. Um, that typically that that four days of engagement would typically be <clears throat> about seven thousand two hundred dollars, and we offer a fifty percent discount on that four day assessment. So it comes in at about thirty six hundred. So about 50% off as a way of uh, helping you evaluate whether Business Central might be a good solution for your, for your particular com company um, or not. So like I said, again, it's a low cost and no long-term commitment, um, but a great way to, to give you a head start on what you might need and, and, and how we would implement that solution with you. Um, let me see. Uh, oh, here we go. So do I have to purchase the licenses for Dynamics 365 Finance and Dynamics 365 Supply Chain separately? Or one of the two could be an add-on to the base license? Oh, good. All right. So, um, so the short answer is you don't have – well, they're, they're – the way Microsoft PAC sells the licensing is a little interesting. I think, don't quote me on this exactly, because it's been a while since I looked at the pricing, but I think it was like for, for the for the license was like, let's say if it was $250, um, and that might be a little high, I think it might be like 220. Then a, a part of that, let's say one was, let's say a part of it was $200 for finance and operation, then you'd pay like another $30 for the, sorry, let's say you pay $200 for the financials, then you'd pay another um, $30 for the supply chain, right? Mm. If your user was like primarily a finance user, or if your user was, let's say, primarily a supply chain user, you'd pay, let's say the 200, um, you know, $20, for that user, and then you'd pay the extra thirty dollars for the finance. So they will, no matter if you're buying finance, if your user is a finance and a supply chain user or FNO, full like they'll use all all those uh, features. Then the pricing is going to be the same. You you get like a thirty dollars sh shaved off discount if the user is only using one or the other. Like if they're only using finance, then it's going to be like about thirty dollars less. Or if they're only using supply chain, then it's only going to be about $30 to that. Hmm. Interesting. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks. Uh, thanks for that. Um, okay. So I think we're going to round up uh, the webinar now. Uh, it's, it's almost the top of the hour. And I wanted to say thank you for attending. And I appreciate all your questions. And please feel free to reach out if you have any more questions or if you'd like to talk to us about the assessment or just more about these products in general. Uh, Nicolette, thank you for your time. It was, uh, it was fun talking with you. You too. Okay. And, uh, you know, I think we're at the end of the hour. So goodbye, everybody. And I hope to talk to some of you soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Bye-bye.